Hi there, my name is Mr. Code, and in this video we're going to talk about Dijkstra's algorithm. And before going into the details, let me first give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, I will generally explain what the algorithm is. Then we're going to talk about how to apply the algorithm based on a step-by-step -step guide on how to use it. Then we're going to actually apply the algorithm based on an example. And we will also solve this example together. And then finally, I will give the pseudocode of the algorithm and we will also discuss the performance of the algorithm. But first, let's start with explaining the algorithm. So Dijkstra's algorithm determines the shortest paths between nodes in a graph. And the graph to which it is applicable can be both directed and undirected. It also must have non-negative weights and it must be connected. Also, if the weights of the graph are all one, you can just use breadth first search to get the shortest path. And this determining of the shortest paths can be done uh, for two cases. So Dijkstra's algorithm can determine the, dist the shortest distance between two nodes of a graph, but also it is used for uh, if you have a fixed source node, then you can determine the shortest path to every other node. And based on this, you can uh, create a shortest path three, which is basically a three with at the root, the fixed source node and uh, the edges and the nodes that are part of the shortest path uh, are connected to it. But in general, the application of a fixed source node uh, finding the shortest paths to all the other nodes is most used in general. Okay, so that's what I want to tell you in general about the algorithm. Let's now have a look at how to apply the algorithm step by step. So before going actually through the steps, um, I just want to make sure that this might be a little abstract for now. But once we go through the steps and we do the exercise and we solve it together, I assure you that this, what it says is going to be logical for you and it's actually going to turn out to be quite easy. So let's just go through them. So the progress of Dijkstra's algorithm can be visualized by a table. That's what we're going to do here. So the first step is create a table in which all nodes initially have a distance equal to infinity, except for the source node. The source node has a distance of zero. So this is actually quite trivial that the source node has a distance which is zero because it's the distance to itself. So it's just an initial value. Furthermore, we choose infinity because whenever we find a path in the graph, this distance will always be smaller than infinity. So we have an initial value and we know that we can update it later on. Okay, so the second step is mark the source node as in progress. And I do that by an arrow that points to the right. So when having a look at this table, this example table that I've drawn, it shows step one and two. So in this example graph, we have four nodes and the first node is the source node. I indicated that by giving it a distance of zero and the other distances are initially infinity and while well, the source node is in progress for the moment. Okay, then step three. Step three says for every outgoing edge of the node that is currently in progress, we have two options. So, so in the first option, we have to satisfy two conditions. And the first condition is if the node on the other side of the outgoing edge is not yet visited. So the node that we're going to check shouldn't be visited yet. And the second condition is that the distance of the outgoing edge plus the known distance of the node that we are currently at should be smaller than the distance of the node on the other side of the outgoing edge that we already know. And then if that's true, then we're going to update the distance to uh, the sum of the distance of the outgoing edge plus the known distance of the current node. And I just got this alpha just to make the text a bit smaller so that I didn't have to repeat this sum. So if those two conditions hold, then we're going to update the distance to uh, alpha. Otherwise, we're just going to continue with the next outgoing edge. And if there's no more outgoing edge, we're going to step four. And uh, well, step four says 
mark the cured node as visited because we have uh, checked all the outgoing edges and if so we have just visited the node and we just can continue to step 5 and in step 5 we say that if there is still at least one unvisited node then we're going to mark the unvisited node with the smallest distance as in progress and then we go to step 3 again so this is a loop we loop uh, every time from uh, step 3 to 4 to 5 and then again if there is an unvisited node then we take the one with the smallest distance and we go back to step 3 so for an example of, of when we're up to step 5 is the table on the right so um, here we are currently at node 2 we have finished uh, checking the outgoing edges of node 1 and distance of node 4 seems to be infinity still and we have two updated distances to 3 and 5 based on uh, the checks of node 1 and once we've completed this iteration um, we're actually just done and then the output will be a table containing the shortest path distances for every node from the source node so that's it for the step-by-step -step guide now let's directly apply the algorithm to an example so based on this we will actually master uh, using the step-by-step -step guide and I will refer back to it when going through the answer but for now the question is given that node 1 is the source node of this graph what are the distances of the shortest paths from the source node to all other nodes so this is the graph that I give you and the question is then apply Dijkstra's algorithm apply the steps that I just gave and from this point you're free to uh, solve the exercise on your own first so if you want to do that I think that's really brave and I encourage you to do it. So if you want to do it, please pause the video and come back if you're done. Just press play again and I'm going to explain the answer to you. So let's go together through the process of getting the answer. So if you remember correctly, the, the first two steps are create a table in which all nodes initially have distance equal to infinity, the source node has a distance of zero and mark the source node as in progress. So that's what I did in the first two steps. Node 2 up to 6 are have a distance of infinity and 1 has a distance of 0 and it's marked as in progress. So then we're going to step 3 and in step 3 we're going to check all the outgoing edges for node 1 which are basically this one and this one and we're going to check whether they have uh, a distance plus the distance of the node we're currently at uh, which is smaller than the known distance so for the first one we see that the value of the edge is 3 plus the known distance of the node we're currently at is 0 um, is this smaller than infinity yes of course it's smaller to, than infinity so we have to update this later on and the same uh, and the same holds for this edge so this is what we do in step 3 we compare um, whether the sums are smaller than the known values because they're infinity we have to update them so that's what we do as a result in step 4 and also because we have uh, checked all outgoing edges of node 1 we're done with checking that node so I indicated that by making it green and adding a, a check mark in front of it instead of the progress sign so this is step 4 and in step 5 we have to check whether there is still an visited node and if so we have to take the one with the smallest distance and mark it as in progress and go back to step 3 so um, so we do that um, node with smallest distance is obviously node 2 so we mark it as in progress and then we go to step 3 and in step 3 we uh, again check the outgoing edges of it and because um, we've already visited node 1 we don't have to check this node again so we're going to the next edge we didn't check this uh, edge yet so we do that same holds for uh, this edge and this edge so we do that in step 3 we compare them and we see that for example for edge uh, the edge going to node 3 that 1 
plus the known distance of uh, the node we're currently at, which is 3, is smaller than the distance we uh, just determined in the previous iteration, which was 5. So this is smaller than 5, and thus we have to update it to 4. And we also check this edge and this edge, and the sums are respectively uh, 7 and 8. So we update that because it's smaller than infinity. Then we're done with node 2, so we check it again and we have updated the others. Then we pick the unvisited node with the smallest distance, which is then obviously node 3. So we mark it as in progress. Then for node 3, we're going to check all the outgoing edges of it. We don't have to check node 1 and node 2 because we've already visited them. Then we're going to check uh, node 4 and node 5, uh, the edges are uh, going through them, so we just check them. And, and now for the edge going to node 4, um, we sum the weight of it up with uh, the known distance, the node we're currently at, which is 4, and uh, the sum of it is 7, and 7 is not smaller than 7 because, well, it's equal so we don't have to update it and then for the edge going to uh, node 5 this is 7 plus 4 which is again smaller than infinity so we do have to update that one and then we're done with node 3 so this is the result now we pick the unvisited node with the smallest distance again which is 4 so we mark it and then we check the outgoing edges of node 4 this is the result for 5, we find a smaller distance than we found previously. So the distance of, the, of this edge is 2. We sum it up with the known distance of node 4. This is 9. And the distance for 5 that we had determined previously was 11, so we have to update it. Then we also have an edge going to 6. Well, this distance isn't smaller, so we don't have to update it. And we're done with checking node 4. We check it again. We mark the unvisited node with the smallest distance again, which is now 6. But the thing is, 6 doesn't have any outgoing edges to nodes that we didn't visit yet. So we can just do the two steps in one. So for step 3 and 4, we don't have to do anything. We can just uh, check node 6 as visited. Then for uh, the last node, we have seen a visited node, there is only one, so it is automatically the one with the smallest distance, so we mark it as in progress. And because all nodes have already been visited, we can't check any outgoing edge anymore because, well, there are no more to visit. So we check it and we're done. And then we have had all iterations and we have still step 5 and 6 left but the answer is not going to change because this is the final answer to the exercise these distances are the shortest paths from the source node to all other nodes so this is the answer it was quite easy right we just had to f follow the step-by-step -step guide and this table provided us by the smallest distances so this is how Dijkstra's algorithm works, based on a table. So now let's have a look at the pseudocode of the algorithm and a bit more on how to implement the algorithm. So this is the pseudocode of the algorithm. It's actually nothing new. I'm sure that once we will go through the pseudocode that you will see the similarities. So let's just do that. So first of all, there's this array. It's called dist, which contains the distances of all nodes. So um, we add the source node and its distance to it, uh, which is zero initially. Then we go along all vertices from the vertices set minus the source node, and we update the distances to infinity. And that's actually the initialization step. So these two are step one and step two from the step-by-step -step guide. Then we initialize a set. This is initially the empty set, and to this set we're going to add 
the nodes that we're going to visit. Then there is this uh, queue indicated by Q, um, which contains all vertices. Then we're going to do a while loop from step seven to step 15. And in this while loop, uh, we're going to loop until the queue is empty. Then there is this function, minimum distance, which uses uh, the queue and the array of distances. And based on this function, the queue will pop the vertex with the minimum distance and will return it and it, this will be u. Then uh, u will be the vertex with the minimum distance so it will be uh, unified with the set s of the uh, containing the vertices that are visited. Then uh, we're going through a for loop and we're going to check all neighbors of a vertex u and for each of these vertices we're going to check whether the distance that's on the edge between u and v summed up with the, distance, the known distance the node we're currently at is smaller than the known value of vertex v and if so we're going to update the known distance of v and that's it we're going to do that until we've had all neighbors of u then we're going to the next uh, vertex with the minimum distance and we're going to continue that. So this is the iteration from step three to five of the step-by-step -step guide. And if we're done, then we're just going to return the array uh, containing all the shortest distances, which is basically this column of the table that we determine with the step-by-step -step guide. So it's quite similar, right? Nothing new here. And the thing is, well, you can also work with a priority queue, which could make things easier because a priority queue has the functionality to directly put the vertices with the minimum priority at the front so that you can directly pop the element that is in the front of the queue. Okay, so now that we've discussed the pseudo code, there's actually only one important question left. Cool, but what's the running time of the algorithm? And this is, of course, an important question as well and the answer to it actually is that it depends and it depends on the implementation of the algorithm because well if you are using a priority queue and you implement it by a self-balancing binary search tree or a binary heap then the running time will be theta the amount of edges plus the amount of vertices times the logarithm of the amount of vertices and if you do it with a Fibonacci heap then the, the answer will be big O of size of the set of edges plus the amount of vertices times the logarithm of the size of the amount of vertices so the reason for this that we're adding this logarithm is that because every time we go through the graph and we fit mark a node as visited we don't come back to it again so the more we go through the graph, the less edges going to the nodes that we've already visited, we have to check. So there's a logarithmic relation in there. And in general, this is when you implement it with a Fibonacci heap, this is the best possible runtime complexity in general, but there are optimizations. However, I won't cover these as they just go beyond what I want to explain to you. So that's it for the running time of the algorithm. And actually, that's also it for the video, because, well, I've generally explained what Dijkstra's algorithm is. We've learned how to apply Dijkstra's algorithm based on a step-by-step -step guide. We've also done an example and actually mastered how to apply Dijkstra's algorithm based on a table in which you can visualize the progress of it. And we've seen the pseudocode of the algorithm. We've discussed also the running time of the algorithm. And I think that's like the complete picture for Dijkstra's algorithm of what I wanted to explain to you. So that's it for the video. If you thought this video was useful, please make sure to hit the thumbs up to give it a like. Um, if you still have any questions, please use the comment section. And if you'd like to support this channel, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.